all this scrap heap of humanity. So it's as if suddenly, you know, once the spigot is, the switch is turned and they're retired, they become useless, kind of like old news or past their sell-by date. Well, those of us who are in this age group, woohoo, we know that's not the case. So um, what else or what can we do with ourselves then? So looking at how to move into what to do with the time we have, and it's again, just taking a small little uh, uh, slice of, of what's possible or what's next. I think it has to start with what I call changing the locus of your focus. <laughs> and I found this first of all, because uh, I'm not retired yet, but I'm self-employed. And so um, I'll probably never retire. But at the same time, I do have um, ideas and plans for what is going forward. But I had to shift the locus of my focus as I aged um, when the last of my three children left the home for college. And all of a sudden, every decision in my life from child number one through child number three, which was a 32 or 33 year period, shifted from thinking first about them um, to making decisions with a spouse or on my own. That's a big change. And it's one that a lot of people don't talk about. They're not even aware of. And all of a sudden, um, it thrusts you into a whole different way of having to make decisions, how you invest your time, how you invest your resources even, and uh, relationships shift, and so on. And obviously, it's the same when someone retires. So shifting the locus of your focus means you have to reclaim a sense of identity at this stage of life. If you're left on your own or left with just a, a spouse or partner in the home um, and you're not in regular or traditional employment, your identity does shift. So you ask, have to ask yourself, who am I? And what do I like about the me that I am or have become in this time? And what are some things I'd like to, you know, scrap, get rid of, <laughs> move on from, and decide and design who will I be? So um, we're actually going to delve into this, this whole identity issue in another session because it's very profound and very rich area. So right now, let's focus on what could I do rather than who will I be? So the first step, as I mentioned, really is to take even a short amount of time or as long as you want to or can to decompress, decompress. Now, you don't want to go too far, carry it too far, become a total couch potato to the point that you decompose. This is not about decomposition. <laughs> this is about decompression. It's when you can finally <sighs> exhale, gain that sense of relief and release. And maybe it means, whether for days, weeks, or months even, do nothing. That's a possibility, but most people who've been in regular employment have a hard time with that because our locus of our focus hasn't shifted yet, at least completely. So it's a hard thing to do nothing when you're used to having a structured and active life. But at least it's kind of fun for, for a few days, if not a few weeks. Um, the other side of it is to do something, but not, not with the whip to your back, so to speak, but do something that you love or that that either calms you or energizes you. And what's interesting is for different people, the same activity will calm one person, or give them a sense of relaxation, and it will energize another or um, take them to different places. And that would be things like, I have a lot of friends who go hiking nowadays and other friends that are into gardening. And, uh, you know, people have different reactions to these kinds of things. but. What you want to look for is something to do that at least satisfies you in some way. It may not be thrilling or even fulfilling, but somehow you feel like, yeah, it was a good good investment of my time, energy, um, moving my thought process or moving my feeling process along. Now, for some people, this will show up as puttering, puttering maybe in the workshop or puttering in a studio, maybe you have a craft studio of some sort, maybe you have a greenhouse, you can putter in there. 
and the uh, the other side of that is to declutter, putter and declutter, <laughs> and declutter your garage, maybe your your work cabinets or your file cabinets, maybe it's a storage shed, maybe it's a basement, and um, I know it's a little bit tricky in a time of a pandemic when you're not even allowed to donate things or have yard sales. It, it, it just doesn't work out terribly well. But um, it can be very satisfying to add that in as, as something to do as a placeholder during your period of decompression. But you want to also move on from there. And even if, if and while you're decompressing, I suggest you draft a bucket list. Now, if you have a list already that's sort of holed up somewhere, well, bring it out and have a look at it, blow off the dust and have a look and see if there's anything on there that still sort of floats your boat. And if there are other things you think, you know, eh, doesn't uh, interest me anymore. So you can strike those things off your bucket list, let them go. But there may be new things you want to put on it. So... I would suggest that you look to put things on your bucket list or things that you want to do before you can't. Now, some people say before you die. Well, we never know when we're going to die. We also don't know when some illness may strike or a life situation may change, whether you move or um, you, you relationships with friends or other, or other people around you shift and change what you have on your bucket list. But put that in as a kind of criteria. And... Um, let it excite you because this is part of what will give you the motivation to get up in the morning. And then I suggest you make a collage out of those items in your bucket list. Now I'm a big collage maker. It's my preferred art form, mostly because I never had the time or took the time to develop specific skills in, in painting and watercolors and um, sketching and that kind of thing. But I can cut things out or rip things out of magazines, words and images that, that sort of speak to me and evoke the spirit of things I want to have in my life. In fact, I do this uh, every New Year's, every special holiday like birthdays, some other special events, or when I'm uh, creating business models or new courses for my business and so on. So it's to make a collage that speaks to you and captures the essence of those things that you want to have in your life. And then just to wrap up here, there's a whole list of, of the top activities that most people think of if they do want to um, fill their time after uh, retirement with activities. And we will in future sessions be looking at what calls you more in instead of just looking to fill your time sort of in a push sense, uh, we'll talk about what's calling you from a pulling sense, something that feels more like a sense of destiny. But apparently, according to a USA Today survey, about 55% of people who plan to retire want to do some travel well obviously we're we're way late at the moment but that's on their on their list of things they want to do spend time with family is at 52 percent now be aware that each of these choices comes with some possible action you may may need to take with it so if you may want to spend time with family but it might require couples therapy or marriage counseling or talking to your kids to set boundaries so they don't sort of dump the grandkids on you far too often. So there's there's this pluses and minuses and interest things that come with each of these activities that you want to be factoring in over time. But the first step is just to lay them out. What do you want to do for the next stretch of time as long as you can? About 34 um, percent have chosen the next three activities. One is to work full or part time. One is to do volunteer work that matters to them or is interesting to them. And another is to take up a hobby. Then 30% people want to spend time with friends if they happen to be available. And 7% want to continue with their education. I have a spouse who's working on his PhD, a doctorate right now in uh, later years. And finally, about 5% talk about becoming entrepreneurs and they want to start a business. So we're going to wrap it up with that. Um, as you make choices about what you're going to do when you're retired, um, it's great to start early, 
And at, at the same time, you know, it's these uh, decisions, while they're important, you are setting up in most cases the construct within which they're going to happen. So make them meaningful to you and um, be realistic, but also have some fun in uh, floating some fantasies. So I'm going to wrap it up there and thank you for being with us today. And do check out sobradionetwork.com and gamechangerthinking.com and we'll have some new courses coming up that I'll tell you about in the next couple of sessions that will take you further and deeper into different areas of this once or for some still dirty word of retirement. Thank you so much and do remember the life you live is the legacy you leave. Bye-bye now. <laughs>